You're very welcome. It's lovely to see you all and so many of you on such a beautiful evening. <coughs> it's uh, very hard to think that it's 70 years ago since Kenneth Webb first walked in to the door of our business. He, he came with his wife Joan to High Street. He was looking down the street at the gentle curve thinking, I wonder could I paint this? And he was a bit distracted by a splash of colour in the middle and these were hand-woven rugs by Mrs. Des Fretwell, which my mother had hanging outside the shop. For sale, obviously. But <coughs> he came in and a conversation developed and she said, you know, that she had introduced crafts into the bookshop to try and liven it up and introduce colour. And he then began to talk about, well, original artworks as well. And, uh, and that is how it all began. So it's really genuine thrill, I have to say, a privilege, a real privilege, 70 years later to be standing here and to present a lot of very new work by this artist who is 96 and was probably painting for a few hours this morning, putting us all to shame. Anyway, I have no idea how many exhibitions we've had, but it's been a long and very happy journey with him, uh, not just on a commercial level, on a business basis, but on a uh, real friendship has developed with uh, the Webb family and the Kenny family. So it's a real privilege to say after 70 years, thank you, Kenneth, not just for being our friend, but for all of this wonderful work as well. And so, to mark this really special occasion, we thought, who better than his daughter, Susan, to open the show. Wow. She is an extremely accomplished painter herself, and uh, I've probably stolen a couple of her sentences already, so I won't <laughs> say any more, except would you just give a warm welcome, please, to Susan Webb. I'm more used to having a paintbrush in my hand when I'm near a microphone. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Dean. And um, so the first thing is to um, say what mum and dad would want to say, because they would really have loved to have been here. So uh, Tom is quite right. Dad was most likely painting for a couple of hours in the studio this morning. And then this afternoon, he'd have taken a little stroll in order to keep the muscles in trim. And mum would have gone for hers this morning and then grabbed her paint bag. And so they're both, their, their lives still revolve around the painting. But um, when the lockdown came in 2020, um, I, you know, they cocooned for a while and you know, they just weren't able to travel so much anymore. And it's, it's an awful shame because they really would have loved to have been here. Um, and they both, um, you know, Dad in particular, obviously, would really want to extend all their thanks, uh, well, his thanks, to Tom and to all of the Kenny family and to Dean for all his hard work, for all the friendship and um, support because it really has, it has enabled Dad to um, produce what you see around here. It's the support of all the community around, but particularly uh, the Kenny family that have enabled him to settle here and to be able to produce these jewels. So, um, well, so at, at the moment, uh, Kenneth is going out for his uh, afternoon strolls, but really he finds grabbing all the paint gear and hauling them off to the site uh, a, little, a little beyond. You know, it's a bit too exhausting to even think about it. So what he does is he has the studio set up with everything to hand, and he has reams and reams of sketches, old, old sketchbooks. Um, he has paintings all around him. He's brought all his little treasures from Ballina Boy to have around him so he remembers the good old days. And uh, he continues to reinvent. He was never one to stand still. He was never one to repeat himself. So the interesting thing is that, that themes 
uh, repeat. Themes come and then they, it's like they go underground and then they re-emerge in a different format. So there's many themes. Here, well, here's, here's one theme, these absolutely glorious poppies. These, he was bitten by the poppy bug when he went to Lanzarote in the late 60s. He was doing a commission for John Hound. And he saw these blazing poppies and the volcanic... Ro sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what the, po what the paintings do. They draw you in. They really do. So he, uh, he was really smitten by, by that in, in the late 60s. And then, in, um, uh, then he was in Ballywalter. Ballywalter had uh, these oriental poppies uh, growing all around our home there. Um, so that was, that, was, that was a period. They, they uh, appeared um, bigger and bigger in his paintings. And then they went underground for a bit. And you can see the more recent ones. Now, the more recent ones, because he's reflecting in his studio, have become more abstract. And uh, we were talking about this recently, and he was explaining that the reason um, his work is becoming more abstract again, although it was in the late 50s, early 60s, he had quite an abstract period. Um, but now he's, uh, he's uh, 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 consciously using the abstract formation in order that he can give, um, with a simplified form, he can use more saturated colour and he can still get the atmospheric effects that you see in the, the pictures that he's done around Connemara, but he's doing it through more pure colour saturation. So he's find, finding that most entertaining, including the little cheeky um, um, sweet peas. They're, um, they're, they're experiments in what colour does. Colour moves you this way, colour moves you that way. Colour, uh, the sensation of colour, um, Make, it touches your emotions, it touches your heart. So, um, so he works uh, for a couple of hours, he brings his pictures, he brings his pictures with them, so they walk around the house with them. So they come to the living room, my sister, because he lives with my sister now, is now used to having pictures pop up all around the mantelpiece, and they sit there and, you know, and he looks, and then he picks up his, his, his uh, uh, pencil and he'll, you know, draw and, uh, anyway. So, as I uh, reflect over the last 70 years, n not all of which I've been around for, uh, but uh, it takes me back. It, it, um, it makes me think of a time recently uh, Dad had um, put his back out. He got excited about a new big picture. Uh, the new big picture is this size, and it is bright, bright pink. It's of the bog. It's of the Marconi bog. It's of the water and the reeds abstracted reeds, quite different, but absolutely brilliant pink is, is the predominant colour. And um, so he got excited and he stood up and he shouldn't be standing up because the way he, he paints is he, he used to, you know, sort of, you know, it's like he's attacking the, um, the, the uh, canvas. So anyway, he, he put his back out, he was in bed for a couple of months. So uh, we were um, uh, talking and um, and one of the things we talked about was a, a famous saying of Einstein's um, that my son, he was asking about Donovan, and my son oft repeats this anyway, um, energy can neither be created nor destroyed, so we're talking about that. And that brings me to a quote which I think really, really fits for Dad. Uh, not that Dad is really what you could call a scientist, but this quote fits uh, for Dad. So Einstein said, The most beautiful emotion that you can experience is the mysterious. It is the fundamental emotion that stands at the cradle of all true art and science. He to whom this emotion is a stranger, who can no longer wander or stand wrapped in awe, is as good as dead. His eyes are closed. To sense that behind anything can be, to sense that behind anything that can be experienced is something that our minds cannot grasp, whose beauty and sublimity, sublimity reaches us only indirectly. This is religiousness, and in this sense, and in this sense only, I am a devoutly religious man. So. Whilst Dad fully engages with this sense of wonder and often slips into the mysterious, 
he, uh, he shares another trait with Einstein, that of tenacity. It's not that I'm saying he's a scientist, but it's quite fascinating to see how it overlaps. And, and uh, anyway, Einstein will talk about art as well, but anyway, tenacity, he works. So whilst pictures just come to him sometimes, at other times he crafts them. And when does one begin and the other take over? They merge. Uh, so often when Dad and I were walking the bog, he would spot something. And when I would quiz him about it, seeking to understand with my logical mind where it came from, he would explain, he would put into words, the shape, the matter, the colour, the texture. But really it was a glimpse of something out of the corner of his eye that caught him. A whisper that he heard and he looked and he saw. But it came ready formed. So I really encourage you to spend some time with these paintings. They slowly reveal more as you look at them. They, they really do. Live with them or come, come back a few times. You'll see more and more. That it's not just that they draw you in. More is revealed. Uh, that's what I find anyway. Anyway, so tenacity work craft. Um, he has these as well and he, ma he makes sure to pass them on. Sean Keating actually said once, you have to be able to draw hands and horses. If you can't draw hands and horses, the game is up. <laughs> well, with, <laughs> with Dad, it was, Dad, it was hands, feet and horses. And he impressed upon me through my long apprenticeship that craftsmanship is something um, that, that is, he himself will always value highly. And now to the miraculous. So um, in 2018, I saw Dad was getting on a bit, and, um, and I saw that he, he didn't understand how important he was. He didn't understand how important he was to the history of art. He had no idea. He gets really shy, he gets really nervous when he presents his work. And I wanted to give him a gift, Matthew and I, my husband and I, wanted to give him a gift of being able to see that, of being able to see how much people love him. He doesn't get it. So uh, we organized this exhibition in, uh, I think it was Hall 3 of the RDS, was it? Anyway, big hall in the RDS. And uh, all of his dealers came to uh, together. It was a really wonderful experience. Tom came kindly and opened it for us. And, um, and uh, we managed to gather, gather together 170 paintings. It was a really big effort, and Dad was like, <laughs> on your head be it. Um, but, um, and he said, oh, I can't, I can't at this age, I can't produce any new big pictures for you. Like, I can't do it. You know, you know, but Matthew and I just kept working on it, and just, uh, you know, every, everyone was so wonderful and contributed the pictures that they had in, in store. And, and there we were in Ballinaboy in Connemara, uh, Matthew, myself, and our son Donovan. And, um, and uh, Donovan, for this exhibition, is going around the bog with him uh, with his 360 degree camera. He's all into te technology. Um, and, um, and Dad gets inspired. And Dad starts a big picture like this, and another big picture like this, and another big picture like this. And his grandson's there filming it. And, and he gets so involved, he strips the shirt off and he's walking, working bare-chested, painting these enormous pictures. So we had all the film of these three big pictures being uh, created. So the thing with Dad is he rises to the challenge. He absolutely rises. And he did this, um, uh, again, miraculous. He, um, he'd had two months in bed. Um, he was feeling very poorly. We fixed what was wrong. But he sprang out of that bed and he was determined he was going again and he had his walker and round the room he went and he just got himself going again. He really is an extraordinary, extraordinary person. So, um, so there he is, he, we're at the exhibition and we have this vid these videotapes of him creating the paintings. We put them on fast forward, we put them beside the pictures so people could have an idea. He's at the exhibition, he's, sit he's sitting there and he's you know, he's, he, he, uh, he's attentive at an exhibition, but he's, he's shy. And there's a couple of people walking around, and, and they're also a bit shy, and Matthew spots them, and, and, and they really want to speak to Kenneth, but they, they think, oh, you know, how could I approach him? And then Matthew says, go approach them. Oh, I can't do that. So um, Matthew uh, takes them over and introduces them to Dad, and they have a little chat, and after I start, said, why would they want to speak to me? So... Why would they be afraid to come and speak to me? 
who could be afraid to come and speak to me? So Matthew takes them over to the, the, to the uh, um, little screen. So look at that man. How old do you think that man is? I forget how old Dad was in 2018, but anyway, you can figure out he's... He was uh, only 91. Well, he was only 91, you see. <laughs> only five years. Uh, so so, um, so he, we go over, and uh, Matthew and he go over and look at the um, screen. And, and Matthew says, well, how old do you think that man is? Is he 50? Is he 55? And there he is. You see, he's standing to paint these giant pictures. And he has his paints down there, so he's bending down, and he's up, and he's up, and he's down. And... Um, and he's like, is he 55? Is he 60? Is he 70? He couldn't be 80, you know. And, um, and Dad got it. I think he's forgotten it by now, but anyway. <laughs> but it was lovely to be able to do that for him just once. Uh, so they're, mar they're mar miraculous. So, um, oh, go on, let's have another quote. Well, I can't remember exactly what John, John O'Donoghue said. John O'Donoghue was very kind to open one of Dad's exhibitions many a moon ago. Tom might remember, it was in, in the gallery in High Street. But um, He spoke about beauty being in the eye of the beholder. I always remember it. And I, I think that when the beholder sees this beauty, he actually brings it forth. And so I think we're very lucky to be graced with these paintings. And I hope that you will all enjoy this extensive show. And before I finish, a um, little bit of history. In 1959, uh, no, 1957, uh, uh, Mum and Dad um, uh, started the Irish School of Landscape Painting. And um, teaching was always um, a part of what Dad did and does. He loves to pass the craft on. He really, he really does. <laughs> and he nurtured me along in this since I had the interest. So in 2020, when uh, we were all locked down, uh, I, I, I'd taken over the school by then, although Dad was still uh, teaching, I, I employed him. Uh, but anyway, um, <laughs> he, he's still very active. Uh, he still is actively involved, but he no longer teaches because we took the school online. Um, and what we do with that is we take an artist every five weeks and we look at the world through that art artist's eyes. So this last five weeks we've been doing Kenneth Webb. So if you want to go to the Irish School of Landscape Painting, Tom will have the details, um, uh, that you can have free access to the library there. There's lots and lots of recordings, but if you go to Kenneth Webb Inspirations, you'll find um, 10 hours of streaming. Um, uh, I'm, I'm painting and uh, in like Dad did, talking about his techniques. But lots of history, lots and lots of history from the early days right up till now. So if you want to know anything about Kenneth Webb, go have a look at that. Um, in the meantime, I would like to finish by saying, Dad has said so much and has so much more to say. May he have many more years in which to do so. Yeah, well done. Thank you. Yeah. Amen to that. Amen. I remember going out to Ballinaboy one day and uh, the door of the house was open. There was nobody there. So I had to wander around the garden and then I saw him. <clears throat> he was backed in against a shrub. He had an easel in front of him. And about two yards away, there was a shrub with creamy uh, flowers. <clears throat> or certainly leaves, creamy leaves. And underneath, there were a lot of white flowers, which he called snow in summer. But there were wispy bits of dandelion floating through the air. <clears throat> and it was absolutely magical. And then he saw me, and I thought, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've broken the magic. I've broken the magic. But he packed everything up, and he <clears throat> took it all into the house, and we went and did our business and our talking. <clears throat> And years later, I said it, mentioned this painting. He said, yeah, it turned out beautifully. Oh, I said, I would love to have seen it. So what I really absolutely endorse everything Susan has said, and thank you for articulating so beautifully, Susan. But Kenneth, he, he not just found the magic, he helped to create the magic, but he most particularly passed it on and opened up our eyes. In those very early days in the 50s with his first paintings, people often would say to us, 
Oh, for God's sake, sure, you'd never see colours like that in Connemara. Nobody ever says that to us anymore. And largely it is due to this man who has opened our eyes. And as Susan says, may he continue, long may he continue to do so. So, Gordamila Mahagi, thank you for your attention and enjoy the exhibition. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Well done to me. I wasn't going to say that to you beforehand, but I knew it wouldn't be.